weekly Devo. Hope you guys are doing well today. Post election edition. Yeah. Well, well, kind of, kind of, not, not really over. Yeah, no, um, but uh, glad you guys are with us today. Why don't you, in the comments, let us know where you're watching from. Uh, and the question that we're going to start with is how late did you stay up last night mm -hmm. watching election results? Like, are you really into it or do you not even care? You went to bed early. Uh, I don't know about you, Kara, but I'm a little tired this morning. I think we stayed up a little later yeah, than normal. We did. My eyes are a little puffy. So <laughs> I stayed up. I stayed up until midnight, which is way past my bedtime, yeah. especially with the new daylight savings time thing, yeah. which I don't understand how all of that works. But did you stay up later than that? Yeah, you handed me the remote, and I made it till like twelve twenty. Okay, and so then, twenty more yeah, minutes. I didn't make it much longer. I I felt like I was. I knew what I was going to know. Yeah. You know? So what about you guys? How late did you stay up? Um, was it was it early? Was it like, did anybody stay up all night long? Uh, you kind of wanted it because you're, you're kind of into the whole politics thing. Yep. I'm into it. And, uh, you know, like for football, we would smoke some food. We would get a whole spread. You kind of wanted me to do that last I night. I know. I mentioned, yeah, maybe picking up a Chick-fil-A, yeah, try or some not wings. quite the same vibe for me as a Alabama football game. But um, anyway, I'd love to hear from you guys. Did you stay up? Did you stay up late? Did you go to bed early? Uh, don't post political comments on here. Listen, no, we don't need enough of that. In fact, we're going to talk a little bit about that uh, today. But I can tell you this. I didn't stay up as late last night as I did in 2000. Right. Do 2000 you remember that? Or 2016. We were up well, late. I, I think I went to bed earlier than two, in 2016, but 2000, if you guys yeah. remember that going all the way That's... back, I, I was kind of new and naive to the whole thing. I thought we would know that night. I stayed up like all night long. Yeah. And if you remember, we didn't know for weeks and months uh, later. And so I can never get that back. So yeah. well, I we lived in Florida. then. We lived so in we Florida. Were, it, was it was crazy. Very, yeah. Relevant. Yeah. So I cashed in the chips at midnight last night and, uh, and here we are today. Yeah. We still don't know. We don't. So you know what? I thought let's um let's do something a little bit different today. We're gonna not focus our time today in the Gospel of John, although I'm gonna be back on Sunday. I'm fired up, ready to preach. You can read ahead, John chapter eight, verse one through eleven. It's another one of those moments that are so powerful. Jesus has an interaction with a woman caught in adultery. Um, this is going to be a message you want to hear and invite someone to come with you uh, because it's a message of God's redemptive love, His grace, and His mercy on full display. It's going to be a powerful day of worship and the Word. So anyway, that's a little teaser for Sunday. But today I thought we are the day after one of the most historic elections. I think we'll all look back at 2020 and we'll remember this year for a lot of different reasons. But uh, this is the day after one of the most hotly contested, one of the most historic in many ways, however this ends up, elections in our lifetime. And so we're all thinking about it. It's on all of our minds in some way or another today. And the people of God have a responsibility. And so we want to talk a little bit about that today. You know, we've been talking in, in the weeks leading up to the election. Um, how should we think? How should we pray? What should we do? And um, and so we're we're into now the hours, the days, the weeks, and the months after. And unfortunately, we hoped this wouldn't be the case. It looks like that the anxiety, the division, the hostility could get ratcheted up to even a greater level based on what we're seeing play out today. So we want to talk a little bit about the elephant in the room, uh, the election, and, um, and and just talk about, okay, what what should our attitude be today? What should our responsibility um, be today? How are you feeling today? I mean, um, we as pastors, mm -hmm. no matter who wins, there's a certain segment of people yeah. that are, are excited and a certain segment of people that are frustrated. Yeah. And, and we are called to pastor all people, love all people. Right. So. You know, how, how are you feeling about things today? Yeah, I, well, it's always hard to feel when you're so tired. So, like, we both did a little foggy today. And I do kind of just feel the weight of what yeah. today is. You know, it's it's heavy um, both ways. You know, we, um, we realize we're not naive to what today means. And there yeah. are consequences to both sides of this. And it, it really does affect people's lives. Yeah. Um, and so, yeah, I just am trying to approach it. But I don't need to carry it. 
right. don't need to carry it. I can sense it and I can be aware of it and I can be thoughtful about it, but I don't need to carry it. Yep. And I'm just trying to be prayerful and and we're just reminding myself how much bigger God is than the policies of the United States. He's yep. just so much bigger than that. And I think we're realizing the church Big C Church has gotten entangled into yeah. the the political fray, yeah. and that's not really the best thing. Uh, we we don't want to forfeit our witness to align ourselves with an earthly political party. And so, if it feels like we've been talking a little bit more about this lately, or you know maybe you want to move on, and can we talk about something else? I think it is important that we talk about the current events, what's going on, and what is the biblical perspective that we should have. You know, I I, I was in prayer yesterday. By the way, every Tuesday at 9, mm -hmm. we have prayer, and that's open to anybody that wants to come and pray with us, but it's all really of our staff. It's OS, uh, Oak School of Leadership, but if any of you would like to come and pray with us on Tuesdays, we invite you to do that. That's been something that we've done here for a long, long time. Um, but we were in prayer yesterday, and at the end, we prayed for the election, and I, I just kind of said to everyone in the room, you know, some of you in this room are are feeling a lot of anxiety and fear right now around this election. You've let it seep into your soul a little bit. Others of you are too young, or maybe you're just not informed enough to know you should be anxious right. <laughs> and afraid because these are these are weighty issues. I mean, these are important things going on in the election. And then I said, others of you um, are faith-filled and you're not anxious and afraid. And that's where we want to be. Right. That's where we want to get to is that we don't let the winds that blow politically or even circumstantially in our lives shake us or move us from the things that matter most. Um, and really the difference then between being full of anxiety and fear or ignorant to the point you don't know you should be aware or, or full of anxiety or fear or full of faith, the difference in those things is our perspective. It's our outlook. It's our worldview. It's, it's how we see Jesus. That's why we're doing the Gospel of John series. But um, I want to talk a little bit about our responsibility, our, our outlook, our perspective. And it can seem like a cliche to say, hey, it doesn't matter what happened in the election. Our, our hope isn't in a candidate. Our, our hope isn't in a political party. Our hope is in Jesus. And that's true. And we've been saying that. But it can it can seem like a cliche yeah. because I know there are some of you that are, are thinking, but it is really important. My hope is in Jesus, but but this is a big deal too, and, and that's true. But when when Jesus began his ministry, the very first message he ever preached, we learn that where our hope is and what our perspective is isn't a cliche. It's actually central to the teaching of Jesus. And I want to take us to the Sermon on the Mount today. Um, Matthew 5 through 7. We're not going to read the whole thing. But this is the very first message that Jesus preaches. And you think about what's the first impression you want to make? What's the first thing you want to say when you meet people? What's the, what do you want people to know right out of the gate? Je this is Jesus' first message. He could have said anything. And he said a lot of things. But there's something that runs through this sermon that I think it's important for us to talk about. And that's the perspective that he wanted us to have on his kingdom, yep. which is above the earthly kingdom and the earthly things that we that we deal with. And so he teaches about that. It's very countercultural and he came at a time where there was a lot of political unrest. There there was a lot of cultural divide. Really it's been like that throughout history, but Jesus entered into a time and a place not that dissimilar from our time and place in terms of cultural division, political hostility and underlying tension. Yeah. Right? And this is what he this is what he had to say about the kingdom. I'm going to give you just a few quick verses, and then we'll talk about it. Really, I just want to encourage you today, as you're at work or at home, or you're watching this on replay, um, as we're listening to all the news, I want you to be encouraged from God's Word today. Here's what Jesus says at the beginning of his message when he's talking about the kingdom. He starts out with the Beatitudes. He says, the very first one, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That phrase, kingdom of heaven appears multiple times in this sermon. It is the underlying thread that ties all of his teaching together in this sermon. He's elevating their perspective from an earthly kingdom, from earthly ambition to heavenly ambition mm -hmm. in a heavenly kingdom. And what he says, and all of these are countercultural, blessed are the poor in spirit. Now that's definitely not American. 
No. We don't talk about being poor. We no. don't want to be poor. No, in we, anything. It, no, we want to win. We want to be on top. Nope. We want our candidate to win. Prosperity. Um, yeah. Prosperity, mm -hmm. all of that. G Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor mm -hmm. in spirit. It's a humility. It's, it's a, a recognition that you don't know everything, um, that there's a greater perspective. There's something greater than you out there that... That, so the humility, yeah. even a brokenness that we approach life with, that we approach the Lord with, Jesus says there's a blessing on those, on those people. And he says theirs is the kingdom. They'll see it. They'll perceive it. They'll experience it. When you have humility, you're blessed because you'll experience the kingdom of heaven. You'll have right perspective. Yeah. He says in chapter 6, verse 10, he's teaching them how to pray. Man, we... We have to be people of prayer. Jesus is teaching, he's teaching them how to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Humility of spirit to know it's not about my kingdom. It's not about my perspective. It's not about my will. It's not about my way. It's God. May your kingdom come. May your will be done. Even if it's different, than I want it to be, even if it plays out in a different way than I saw it, even if my candidate doesn't win, yeah. may your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He says in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, all of the same sermon, by the way. Um, aren't you glad I don't, I don't preach quite this long? I mean, Jesus preached a long time. <laughs> Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, but seek first what? His kingdom. Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all these things will be given to you as well. Don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. What's, what's he wanting our priority to be? What's he wanting our perspective to be? Yeah. Political party advancement? Mm -mm. Personal advancement? No, it's, it's seek first his kingdom yeah. and his righteousness, yeah. and he takes care of everything else. This is just good perspective for us the day after this election. Yeah, I mean, I think it's hard for a Christian to feel like you don't win on election day because you're not on either team. Yeah. That has to define yourself as being on one of those teams for you to have a win. So, you know, I think that just as a reminder that our win is when people who are far from Jesus come yep. to Jesus. That's our win. And frankly, election day does not facilitate that. And I get it. I mean, there are some of you that may be watching this but and you're saying, but there are really... A lot of biblical values at stake here, and you're right. And neither political party has a stranglehold on those biblical values. There's each each one has certain biblical values that seem to align more with that political party. But at some point, you have to lean back and you have to have a perspective that's eternal, a perspective that's uh, that's God, and saying, "I trust you. I will seek you." Um, and, and may your will be done. This is what Jesus is teaching them. Yeah, and frankly, I don't have an appetite for the government to advance biblical values. Let's have the church, Absolutely. and let's have us as individuals That's advance what we've been biblical saying. values. And so, you know, it's, it, it, getting the government to advance biblical values isn't a win either, because that's not going to bring personal transformation. That's what we've someone. been talking about at Oaks Church, that is our responsibility to roll yes. up our sleeves and meet the needs of, of yep. people, uh, help the hurting, feed the hungry, clothe those who don't have clothes, um, take care of the widows and the orphans, and we're going to be doing more and more of that. You're going to be hearing a lot more of that as we head into next year. Um, but this is, this is our job. It's our responsibility, and we want to we own that. Yep. And then he, he ends his message in chapter 7 uh, with a familiar story you may remember from Sunday school, if you go all the way back to the flannel graphs and, and all of this. It, he says in verse 24, Therefore, Everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house on the rock. The rain came down, the streams rose, the winds blew and beat against that house. Think about all the things that are going on in our world. Think about all of the changes, all of the challenges, all of the frustration, all of the hurt, all of the loss. All of it. It's the rain, the winds beat against the house. Yet it did not fall because it had its foundation on the rock. But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain came, the streams rose, the winds blew, and beat against that house, and it fell with a great crash. What's our perspective? Where is our hope? What's our foundation? 
you know, you and I had a chance to attend the funeral yesterday mm -hmm. of a sweet lady yes. in our church. Many of you know Diana Thompson. Uh, she passed away recently, um, and her funeral was yesterday, and so we were there, and um, it was an unbelievable, unbelievably powerful service. Uh, Pastor Scott preached an incredible message, but her life really preached the message, and those of you that know or knew Diana, you know this was true about her. And this is what came out in the in the service yesterday. She was a woman who loved well, who served well, and who made a difference with her life. You know what we didn't talk about? Which political party she was aligned with. We didn't talk about a whole lot of life accomplishments in her career, although, you know, you mentioned those kinds of things. But the message of her life is she loved Jesus with all her heart. And she loved others with all her heart. And she served her church. She served other people. She served her family. And the end result is her life made a huge impact on other people. And I, I left going, that's what I want to be said yes. about me. That's how I want to yes. live. Well, if that's true, my perspective can't be caught up in politics. It can't be caught up in the winds that blow around me. My perspective, my foundation has to be deeply rooted in Christ and, and on his word. And um, that's, that's I think, one of the biggest things I'm, I'm trying to remind myself of me this too. week. Yeah, me too. Just th this year, this whole year has been a reminder that what I need more than any circumstance changing, you know, there have been a lot of circumstances I wish would change about yeah. this year, but I can't change that. And I, what I really need is grace and what I really need is peace outstanding of circumstances changing that I need the grace and peace and that's what makes my life attractive to other people yes. that's what makes people go what is different because in the midst of the insanity of this year there's grace and peace in her life and I have access to that grace and peace I have access to all the grace and peace I could ever need and it will never come from circumstances and what we post on Facebook and what we email what we text and the kind of conversations we find ourselves in during weeks like this, mm -hmm. reveal more about that than anything else. It's one thing to sing it, it's one thing to say it. It's another thing that when you get pressed a little bit, what comes out? Yeah. And it's been a little frustrating to see among some Christians, some I respect, what comes out when they've been pressed this week and revealing kind of where their hope lies. We wanna be a church, our hope is in Jesus, our foundation is on Him, that we don't shake when the winds blow. We're firm in our foundation, our perspective is eternal, it's not earthly. I think it's a great encouragement for us this week because it's very easy to watch election results and to dive down into the returns and the court battles that may happen in the days ahead and let ourselves get caught up in that. Um, but there's a, there's a different perspective. I wanna end with Psalm 146 and then we'll pray. I hope this is an encouragement to you, but here's what it says in Psalm 146. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, my soul. I will praise the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. Do not put your trust in princes, in human beings who cannot save. When their spirit departs, they return to the ground. On that very day, their plans come to nothing. Yeah. Blessed are those whose help is in the God of Jacob, whose hope is in the Lord their God. Yes, it's like the psalmist knew what we needed to hear yes. in November of 2020. We can't put our hope in princes. We can't put our hope in, in people. Our hope has to be on the Lord. He's the only one that can save us and sustain us. Mm -hmm. So I hope this is an encouragement to you. Um, share this with someone who needs to see it. And uh, I hope it's been a blessing. Come on, let's pray together. Let's ask God to use our church in a powerful way, to use our families in a powerful way in these days, weeks, and months ahead to shine bright in a very dark and turbulent time. Amen. So Father in heaven, thank you so much for your word that stands as the foundation of our lives, the truth above all. God, and how we live and think and act that shapes our perspective, gives us an eternal perspective, not an earthly one. Lord, it's so easy for me to get caught up in all the stuff going on around me, to get discouraged and frustrated and, and um, feel justified in, in some of my, my thoughts and even actions. But Lord, help me to, to center myself on you. Help me to, to look to you, my hope to be in you, to not just say that, uh, but to live that in every aspect of my life and how I parent my boys and how I love Kara and how I lead this church. And may everybody who's watching right now do that in every part of our lives and in every relationship that we would live out that our hope is in you. 
and that that's what people would see, like, like Diana Thompson. That's what we, we saw in her life, and it made a difference for so many. Um, continue to multiply that spirit throughout our church, I pray in the name of Jesus. Give peace and comfort and help to your people this week, I pray. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. God bless you guys. I can't wait to see you this Sunday. It's going to be a great week in the house of the Lord. <laughs> see you then.